Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about XRF image registration. XRF image registration refers to overlaying an XRF image on top of the RGB image so that we know where exactly each element is located. We can't really use the same method as we used for registration of RGB images as we might not be able to find the same features in all the XRF images. So we have to come up with a new approach which I have explained in this video. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about uh, the best way to register XRF images to an RGB image in MATLAB. X-ray fluorescent is widely used nowadays for the detection of different elements present in the material under the study. We are going to be focused on the XRF imaging which is used in the artwork analysis to identify different elements present in the artwork which helps authenticate the artwork. XRF imaging has also some resemblance to multi-spectral imaging as the output from this method is also a bunch of images of the same scene where each channel contains the information on where a particular element is present in the work. Here is an example. As you can see here, these are XRF imaging that shows the shows a particular element and its location on the painting. The same as here, but these ones are not registered, which we're going to register in this work. And this is the reference RGB image. As you can see on the left on the left side this image has already been registered as you know where like iron element is located but with this one this has not been registered because XRF image is only uh, taken from this area uh, part of the face of the person in the in the in the artwork so we're going to show you guys how to how to do this how to do the registration of XRF image to an RGB but when we talk about registration of XRF image, what we mean uh, is that we want to overlay the XRF image on the RGB image in a way that we know where exactly each element is present on the original image. In order to do that, we have to go through some stages, which we're going to explain. The first one is, as observed, the XRF images resemble black and white image. And in some cases, they resemble the negative of black and white image. Therefore, the reference RGB image is changed to a grayscale or a negative grayscale image, shown as follows. So this referenced image first is, is changed to a grayscale or a negative of grayscale, which is 1 minus this image, assuming the, that the image is normalized between 0 and 1. The second stage is now that we have two different images, uh, two different reference images. One is black and white reference and the other one is negative of black and white reference. The experimenter now should first choose the reference and the XRF image that are most similar to each other. It does not matter which reference or XRF image is chosen for this process. What matters is to choose the reference and the XRF that are visually most similar with respect to one another, shown as here. So these are XRF image here, and these are the reference image. So if we want to compare the reference image with XRF, this is this XRF is more similar to the black and white, to the gray scale reference, but these two are similar to the negative of gray scale to the negative of gray scale image of the reference. So we have to now find out which one of the reference is most similar to the XRF image that we have chosen to register. The third stage is uh, the two images reference and the XRF are chosen as explained before. Now that we have them after choosing the two images uh, the user should choose at least four common points on each image. In other words, four corresponding points on each image are selected by the user. Then the matrix of transfer between those points are acquired. And then the same matrix is applied 
to the XRF image to register that with respect to the RGB image. Interestingly enough, the same matrix of transform is applied to all the other XRF images automatically. And then it would automatically register them with respect to the RGB reference image. So if you have a lot of XRF images in your directory, all you have to do is to, is to just register one of them. And the rest of the XRF images will be automatically registered. So what I, what I meant by the last one is like, you just have to choose one of these images to register with the RGB and automatically everything else, all the other XRF images will be registered to the same reference. Okay, that's the stages that we have to go through. But let's explain more this problem using the real problem in MATLAB. Okay, here is the uh, GUI that I've written for XRF image registration. Let's run it and see uh, the steps that uh, one has to go through. There are four steps. The first one is to uh, choose the XRF elemental uh, uh, image and then choose the reference to be cropped, especially in our case, as you guys have seen. Uh, there's a need to be there's a need for this image to be cropped and uh, because as you can see it's way bigger than the XRF images. So uh, and then this, the third step is to just choose the reference image and then uh, we could skip this stage but let's keep it for now. And then the fourth st step is to just register the XRF elemental image. Let's go through the GUI coding very quickly and see uh, what's happening. So this is one of the push button. This is the first one that selects the XRF image and uh, the XRF images would be saved and the, the, their format is TIF so the, the XRF image would be ready, the one that you choose and uh, that would be it. And then the push button 2 uh, is the reference image that is going to be cropped. So first you choose the reference image and then it is cropped and the image would be saved to be used by the next push button which is going to be uh, in this stage the, uh, the negative of reference image would be made and uh, the reference image would be, would be chosen would be saved and chosen. And then the next one is, this, is the one that, that everything is happening. You, you, you get the reference and everything and the XRF image that you already read. And the, here is where you, you would choose either grayscale or negative of grayscale reference and one of them would be chosen. And it comes, comes down here and we the ref1 here is has the same size as the reference image X, RGB and the image here it refers to the XRF image. The, I fuse the XRF image with the uh, zero reference with the dark reference to make the to make the image bigger for the XRF so that when I transform the XRF it, nothing funky would happen and it would just move inside the image and it would be uh, at the same place as um, as my reference image. So th this is only just for g making the XRF image bigger. And then here is where interesting points are selected. Uh, the common points between XRF image and RGB image and they are used to transform the image. This is the CP2 to CP2 T CP to T form and T form is a matrix so these are the points that are selected between the reference and the XRF image and the matrix is, is used to uh, transform the XRF image the, the XRF image that is enlarged so the XRF image that is enlarged changed and then the uh, which would move the XRF image in the image that has the same size as the reference image. It would move the image to be at the same place as the uh, reference image. 
and here is where the registered file is saved because the, M the IMG out is the image that the XRF image that is registered and I fuse that with the dark reference and uh, that would be our registered image but then sometimes we want to overlay the image so this is how we overlay the unregistered XRF image with the reference and also we also uh, overlay the reference and the registered XRF image so that, we know, so that we know where in the image the XRF elements are uh, are located and also like the elements where are they located so and this is also what what I have made for myself just to uh, just to show what happens to the regist to the reference image if they would change and then in this in this part uh, all the images all the XRF images are, are automatically registered using the same matrix transform that I have come up with before using just one XRF image and the reference RGB image but you have to make sure to put some other conditions that the already registered images are not going to be read in. So I have put these conditions if it's re reference registered, if it's registered, if the name contains registered, if the names contains ref or overlay, just ignore them and only read for me the files that contain TIFF and not contain anything else. So this not contain is very important. So they would just so the program would just read the rest of the unregistered XRF images. So this goes through the same matrix and uh, it would apply the same matrix to all uh, XRF images and it would fuse them with the uh, with the image J. The J is the reference image and the cropped reference and then it would fuse them and uh, then it would just save them in the in the directory and uh, just the overlaid and also the registered one and as you can see this is the registered one which would fuse the ref one ref one is the has the same size as the j but it's just zero and i have specified it here so uh, at the end it just shows the operation is complete and uh, uh, it would just come out of it. Let's just do a quick run and this is the folder that contains the XRF images and RGB image. Let's run it quickly. Okay, step one, X, choose the XRF image to be registered. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna choose one of them has already been I'm going to choose this one. Now choose the reference image to be cropped. Let's do that quickly. And I'm going to do a quick job. I know that it's almost this area. and let's crop it. This image has been saved to the directory as ref and now we gotta choose the reference and I'm gonna choose the reference this one and now register. So it says choose the reference image uh, based on the similarity to the XRF image you would like to use. Input one for grayscale and two for negative grayscale. I want to choose one because as you can see one is uh, very similar to the XRF image that I'd like to use. So here I have to uh, enter the number of interesting points which should be four on each image and overall eight and I'm going to choose eight so that it will be the least number of interesting points. Now we have to choose the interesting spots. One of them I want it to be in the eye, upper, lower side, and then one of them is in nose. I'm going to do the same thing here. 
and then one of them I want it to be right around the lips where they meet and the other one I want it to be near the right eyes right eye so this is the registered one and that one was the unregistered and when the it's still going on and when the operation is completed we're gonna receive something letting us know that the operation is completed as you can see here just just an example how the uh, unregistered and the registered looks so it says operation is completed and the images are saved in the directory and as you can see these are the registered images and you can see where each element is located now and these are the registered without overlaying to the standard so if you just open the standard the reference and open this one you would tell you could be you could we would be able to tell where each element is located calcium elements in this case yeah that's about it and uh, it was it wasn't a hard a very complicated algorithm very simple but very effective thank you so much for watching this video I hope you were able to get something out of this video and if you liked it I would appreciate if you if you could just subscribe to this channel and also share this video with your friend thank you so much and have a nice day